Welcome to part four in the basic energy analysis series, comparing annual performance. In the last video, we showed how to compare energy performance from one month to the next. We are now going to extend that concept to long-term trends over several years. Most organizations report high-level executive results on a calendar year or fiscal year basis. They do this to match the accounting cycle so energy reporting and accounting reporting can be delivered together. Also, enterprise goals are set on an annual basis, so annual reporting is needed to track the degree of success against those goals. Most people intuitively feel that full years can be reasonably compared against one another to spot trends. They don't realize the significance of weather variation and the complications that result if you don't deal with weather properly. Fortunately, you know that weather variation from one year to the next complicates the energy picture, but you also have the conceptual tools to deal with it. From part three, we saw that annual energy performance can be illustrated with two stacked bars, the actual consumption and the adjusted baseline. Let's add a few more years calculated in exactly the same way. Remember, the adjusted baseline value for each year is calculated by entering the particular conditions for that year into the baseline model. Let's look at the pattern. For the first, third, and fourth years, we can see that the orange actual consumption bars are below the adjusted baselines. We are operating more efficiently than we were during the baseline period. However, in the second year, that's not true. The consumption in year two is above the adjusted baseline. Even though year two shows the lowest actual energy use, that was entirely due to milder weather conditions in year two. In reality, year two was the least efficient of the four years. It was the only year in which energy use was worse than the baseline. This is worth taking a moment to think about because it is a very important concept. Comparing the actual consumption from one year to the next doesn't tell you anything at all about operating efficiency. Comparing adjusted baselines only tells you about the severity of the weather from one year to the next. It is only the difference between the actual consumption and the adjusted baseline that tells you anything at all about efficiency changes. Now here is one of the challenges with energy reporting. To many people looking at this type of graph who haven't been through this video series, the conclusion that we just drew from this chart might not be obvious at all. Is there a statistically valid way to directly compare energy performance from one year to the next? Instead of adjusting the baseline, can we use the same baseline for every year and instead adjust the actual consumption values to remove the effective year-over-year -year weather differences? Well, there is a way, documented as the normalized savings method under the International Performance Measurement and Verification Protocol. Let's call this method two. Method two is used less often than the standard method we've already covered. To understand it completely requires us to follow some challenging logic. First, let's compare the standard method with method two. The chart on the left shows the results of the standard performance calculations described earlier. The one on the right is based on exactly the same data, but uses method two instead. The first thing to realize is that method two does not deal with actual and adjusted baseline values. Instead, it compares an adjusted consumption against a fixed baseline. You may want to stop here and consider how report readers will deal with that fact. They will be looking at values that are not real. The consumption values under this method are the result of calculations. There is no way for a skeptical reviewer to check the numbers by adding up metered consumption from utility bills. To illustrate, we can see that the consumption for year two appears a lot higher as a normalized consumption calculation. As an energy specialist, you will probably want to be ready to explain this difference if and when the question comes up. Now we're going to step through the process. First, we have to set the baseline. We calculate the baseline model as we would normally, but now we are not going to adjust it for new weather every year. Instead, we have to fix the baseline by picking some standard weather. We have a few options for standard weather. It should be chosen with care because the baseline will become locked in for a period of time. Locking in the baseline is important to ensure that reports remain consistent from one reporting period to the next. There is nothing that creates more confusion with management than picking a baseline too quickly and having to change it later. The most obvious choice for standard weather would be the weather during the baseline period. If our baseline period was 2009, we would then be combining the 2009 model with the 2009 weather conditions. 
the resulting value would be exactly what was consumed in 2009. Simple, right? But what if 2009 was much warmer than usual? You would then be adding a bias toward less heating and more cooling to all later calculations. This effect is a particular concern if you want to forecast future energy consumption, and I'll explain what I mean. Remember back to part one of this series. The baseline is what you expected to consume. If you use the baseline to look ahead, that's a forecast. You may not be thinking about forecasting now, but when you get there, you will want to be as realistic and defensible as possible. Because you don't know the future weather, you will still want to use a weather set that comes as close as possible to what the future is likely to be. You definitely don't want your forecasts of future consumption to be higher or lower than the realistic range, simply because the weather used to calculate them is warmer or colder than normal. In fact, there is no such thing as a normal year. Every year is different from other years in some way. There is no one year we can point to and say, that's the year that had normal weather, and we'll use that weather for fixed energy baseline calculations from now on. Luckily, ASHRAE, the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers, recognized this problem about 40 years ago. Since then, ASHRAE and others have blended many years of historical weather data to arrive at a typical meteorological year for hundreds of global weather stations. TMY data is accepted by energy professionals around the world as the best possible information for this type of analysis. To get a typical year fixed baseline, produce the model for the base period in a standard way. Then gather the TMY data for the weather station. The resulting combination is a baseline value representing a typical year at the building location. It is also the best basis for predicting future consumption. Our fixed baseline consumption will be what we would expect to consume if the building performed exactly as it did during the baseline period and we had absolutely typical weather. Now we need to adjust the consumption in each year for weather differences. First, we create a model for each year. Remember that the model is a mathematical representation of how the consumption responds to weather. The process is exactly the same as producing a baseline model for a base year, except now we are doing it for every year in the comparison. Why do we do that? Because we are trying to describe energy performance in each year against weather. If the operational efficiency of the building is changing during the reporting period, the models will reflect these changes. In the same way, if the operational efficiency is changing very little, the annual models will be very similar. Once we have the models for each year, we simply plug our standard weather set into each one, and then now you have a direct visual comparison of operating efficiency from one year to the next. Remove the fixed baseline if it's not important for your message. That concludes part four of the series. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we will be dealing with a topic that we skipped over earlier, measuring weather. We will explain how weather is turned into numbers that we can put into a consumption model through the calculation of heating and cooling degree days.